Hello everyone, in this video tutorial I'll be going through your different guide options available to you through Simplant. If you have any technical inquiries, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us in this email address below. Our first guide option would be our bone supported stent. For this procedure you would need to open up your flaps, seat the stent directly onto the bone and use a fixation screw if required uh, to fixate the stent in position. If the ridges are quite shallow or flat, I do highly recommend that you use fixation screws, but if they are quite prominent, um, they are very stable enough to use without the fixation screws. I know many users that do not order a fixation screw with that. From a production point of view, we do not need a prosthesis scan to fabricate a bone-supported stent. However, from a planning perspective, you would need a prosthesis in your, in your scan simply to give you the guidance of where to place your implants and the angulations, um, you know, limitations that you can work with in terms of a prosthesis outline. Now, um, to do that, you can use a single scan technique. We do not need the base plate to be radio opaque, but if you do have a, ba a base plate that is radio opaque, it will give you your gingival level so that you know um, how much gingival depth you've got. Um, but because it's a single scan technique, you would need to use a conversion service to split the two objects apart, your CBCT um, image uh, from your you know, patient's existing teeth uh, in comparison to the radiographic uh, prosthetic stent. You would need to um, use a conversion service. Unless you've got the segmentation editing module in, within your Simplon software, not everyone has it, but I know all Simplon 18 users will have it as we give it by default now. Um, but older versions, or you know, for older users that have not purchased the additional editing module, you definitely need to use the conversion service. There's a bit of a process involved with this. It means that you'd need to have either a complete new setup done with a try-in and then a conversion into a barium sulfate denture. So your laboratory processes are there, there's a bit of a delay and cost, you know, some costs involved with that. Um, but if you are, you know, using the patient's existing denture and just duplicating that, just make sure that the patient's well fitting in the patient's mouth. If not, you would need to do a relay. Our next guide option would be a mucosa supported stent. So with this stent, it sits directly onto the mucosa. It's quite a spongy sort of surface, so we do actually recommend, well, we don't just recommend, we actually make it mandatory for use fixation screws, okay? Simply because it's very easy to dislodge, it's very easy to move about, um, but this is a great solution if you want to have a minimally evasive surgery. Um, but for this sort of uh, guide scenario, we do need a prosthesis with a base plate that's... Uh, um, barium sulfate converted because the base plate will determine the fitting surface. All it is is that we are replicating the denture into a stent. Um, you could use a single, a single scan technique and convert it into barium sulfate completely, including the base plate. But if you know to save costs and time, there's also another technique called the dual scan technique. And with this one, you can use the patient's existing radiolucent denture and just place some beads on the flange area. So you can see there's three on one end, three on the other areas. And then there's also some in the palatal regions, roughly around 12 beads. These beads are glass beads, so you can actually embed them into the denture or you can just stick them onto the surface either way. you can, If you are sticking onto the surface, you can ping them off and reuse them. If you're embedding them into the denture, you're not sacrificing the aesthetics because it's clear. It's a two-part scan, so what that means is that the patient will wear the prosthesis on the first scan with the beads attached to it. On the second scan, you take the denture out and you place it into the CBCT scan um, uh, on the same direction as it was in the patient's mouth. Okay, And because it's surrounded by air and there's no tissues around it, we actually are able to use the Simplon software to then restore that information back and um, replenish the denture information, even if it's radiolucent. The importance here is to make sure that the denture is radiolucent because we need to see this pattern. This pattern that you see here, we need to see a pattern of beads so that the, the system can calculate the two images and uh, place them together, overlap them together. If they're not radiopaque, uh, sorry, if they're not radiolucent and they are radiopaque, 
the system cannot identify the beads, the individual beads, and they will not be able to merge the two together. Again, if you're using the patient's existing dentures, just make sure that it's well fitting in the patient's mouth. If you need to do a reline, please do so before doing this procedure. Our next guide option would be our tooth supported stent. And this stent sits directly onto the teeth, so the more, st the more teeth available, the better. Um, you know, you've got more stability that way. For this protocol, we definitely need a, some form of digital impression or impression of the patient's mouth. Now, we cannot pour the models at our end. We would need this, the study costs uh, sent to us. So ideally, send a silicon impression to your laboratory, get them to pour up the models, and then send the models to us. However, if they do have the scanning facilities, rather get them to scan it in STL format and ask them to send you the digital copy of them. It saves you having to say, uh, send the models to us. It saves the delay. It, it reduces the risks of the models getting lost. And also, it reduces the risks of getting the models damaged during transit. So if you can, rather stick to STL format. Um, so get a lab to scan it, or if you've got an intraoral scanner, scan it in and then export it in STL format alone. No other format is um, uh, compatible with us. So we need the standard clean STL format. We use a three-point referencing system, so we need to clearly identify three points in both CBCT scan, as you can see, this is just bone and teeth, and then the STL file, which is tissue and teeth. So our only reference points that we can work with is the teeth alone, okay? Now, the more teeth we have in a larger space span um, to create a triangle tripod effect, the more accurate the merging of the files would be. So nice, clear uh, impressions is vital, very important. No blowholes, no chipped teeth, and no drag, okay? Silicon impressions is um, definitely what we need. Alginate can alter the actual dimensions of the study cast, which not will not give you a true accurate positioning of the stent, okay? It could sometimes shrink and not actually fit on um, the, the, the patient's uh, oral environment on the day of surgery. So please make sure that they are very accurate Now, if you're sending models to us because you do not have uh, some sort of scanning facility, either yourself or your laboratory, uh, if you are packing it, packing it in a box and sending it to us, make sure that the if you're sending us more than one model, individually wrap them and wrap them really well with bubble wrap or sponge because if they come into contact with each other, they, they, they have a tendency to just break into a million, million pieces. Um, courier services tend to just throw these boxes about, so you do not want anything to go wrong uh, during that time when it's uh, in transit. So pack them really well and also submit a digital prescription first on Simplant uh, ordering website. Uh, then get the case ID and add, attach a note with the case ID within the, mod, uh, within the box with the models in place. This will tell production where uh, these models belong to and it will, make, uh, it will make things a lot easier. If you are submitting STL files, make sure that you transfer the files digitally either through your project using the optical scan module or uploading the files online during your digital order. For more information on this, please view video tutorials on how to upload STL files within the order online or um, how to use the optical scan module. Our next guide solution would be our uh, Simplon guide reduction guide, actually. Now, these reduction guides are a add-on uh, to the shopping list when you come to ordering your guide. And how that works is that you would place the guide directly onto the ridge. It will give you the indication or the line of where you need to trim. But do not trim with the guide in the patient's mouth. You'd need a biological pen and mark it along this uh, straight line. That will give you the indicator of where to trim it. And then take the stent off and trim the ridge uh, uh, to that level. You do not want to trim with the guide in place because it's a resin material. And if you get any residue stuck uh, in, in the patient's jaw, it could cause an infection. Now we have three different type of interfaces, of tubes interfaces on the guide. So you can use different type of kits. 
You've got the safe guides, which is a fully guided solution from start to finish, giving you full depth control and orientation. But that means you need to invest in each and individual uh, implant system of uh, your choice. So if you've got more than three implant systems, you would need to invest in three implant systems and more, and that can be quite a high investment. So rather focus on the ones that you're going to be using the most. Um, so 25 of the major implant systems are compatible with the safe guides. Um, uh, if you need more information on other implant systems, please do not hesitate to ask. Now, this solution gives you the fully digital workflow, so it allows you to um, do immediate um, sort of cases using Atlantis abutments. So this is definitely something um, you would need if you're looking down the digital workflow route. Our next guide option would be the universal guide. This is semi-guided up to three diameters. So it's only depth control, not orientation control. And any further diameters, um, you would need to control that manually by purchasing other additional keys that closely resembles the diameters of your manual surgical kit. But because it's a universal, it means you can use it with any implant systems because it, it, it pretty much just starts you off. Whatever you do after that, you're finishing it off manually with your sur manual surgical kit so that you comply with the uh, protocols of that individual implant system. And then you've got your Simplant Long Stop Pilot Guide. Now, these Long Stop drills is drills that we provide. You can order those online. And how that works is that, um, you know, there's six different drills and any in-between measurements, they are controlled by the guide sleeves on the, on the actual stent itself. So we can move these sleeves to accommodate in-between uh, measurements. And um, they are case-specific drills, so we can send you the relevant ones when you order the guide. Um, they are also the cheapest one out of the lot, and uh, from this point onwards, you would take the guide off and finish the case off manually. We have two other uh, guides which you may have come across, which be would, would be the classic guides. These classic guides are not available at the moment. They are actually discontinued, and you can um, actually see this on versions older than version 18 in your options list. Um, however, if I was to just give you a, a brief explanation on how those guides work, is that you would get a guide for each uh, key diameter. So if you're using three diameter drills, you'll end up with three different guides. And you'd have to change your guide with every drill change that you do as you work up your increments. And that is not exactly environmental friendly. So this is one of the reasons why we've discontinued uh, the classic guides. Um, the classic guides is um, pretty much being replaced by this universal guide system, which is actually a lot better. It's one guide. You don't have to remove it in between uh, changing your drills, and it just keeps things a lot more stable. And then you've got the regular pilot guide, which is very similar to this one here, except you are using your own pilot drill from your manual surgical kit of any system. You just are required to tell us the diameter of that drill, and we will closely match the tubing to that drill as best as possible. Um, the, the only complex part of it is that it's not depth control, so you would need to proceed with caution. And then our final feature that is available to some implant systems would be the lateral access guides. Now, this is not available to all implant systems. It's down to the design of the guided surgery kits, but if your kit accommodates it, then this is actually very useful. Um, how that works is that if your patient doesn't you know, have the ability to open the jaws wide enough, you can actually have your, a little bit of your jaw extended and then um, um, slot it in from the side. And then you engage your key or the sleeve on drill into position and then you start the drilling procedure. So this is quite handy if you're having uh, long implants in the posterior e region. However, be, be very careful when you're using long implants because the longer they are, the more difficult it is to reach at the back of the mouth. This now concludes our different variety options of uh, guide ordering uh, solutions that you can look through um, and order from Simplant. If you have any further inquiries regarding this or if you need any further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch and we'll be help, more than helpful to assist you. Thank you very much.